All right, I want to do a little review here on finding the resultant forces on a static beam using the summation of forces and moments technique. And we're going to be working this problem here. This is a force diagram that's been done from some uh, example problem somewhere. And the first thing we got to know or realize is that this is statics. This is a static beam, so it's not moving around in space. So in other words, if there was a thousand pounds acting down and 800 pounds acting up, then it would be mo in movement. But in this case, it's a static problem. We know that in advance. We've been given that information. So knowing that, once we figure out all the summation of forces on this thing, uh, basically they should add up to zero. Uh, also, we know that there are no angular forces on this uh, beam. So there's no x vectors at all. So it's all in the y direction. So, and again, just as a reminder, our assumption always is that y is up and x is to the right. Okay, so here's my diagram just basically rewritten from that problem. And here's all the dimensions. So between this reaction uh, force that's going to be occurring here and between and this force is 3 feet. Between this one and this one is 5 feet. Between this one and this one is 3 feet. Between this one and this one is 6 feet. Just like it shows in the problem here. So there's going to be, so there's 2,200 pounds acting down on the beam, 950 and 2,500 as shown. And then there's two supports here on either end. And we don't know those forces, but we can figure them out. Because we know that this thing is not in motion, it's a static problem. Then the moment around A is going to equal zero. So therefore, knowing that the moment is equal to the force times the distance away from the moment point that's being analyzed, we can figure out what these reaction forces are. So basically what I did here is I say the moment around A is zero, and that's equal to the force times the distance of every single one of these forces that are happening. So the very first one is 2,200 pounds three feet away. So it's 2,200 pounds times three feet. The main thing we need to understand here is signs. Signs tells us the direction that our force is trying to push this thing. So if A is our pivot point, 2,200 pounds is acting down on it, so it's trying to rotate it in a clockwise direction. Okay? We've established here that clockwise is a negative moment. So therefore that force is happening in a negative direction. It's trying to twist the thing backwards. So that's where this negative sign comes in. This force around the A, as it, is, as it pertains to the A point, is also trying to twist it around that same direction. So that's also being subtracted. And there's the distance, 950 times 8, and on and on. The only one that is positive in this situation is this other reaction force at the end. Or, uh, yeah, it's a support, so it's going to have a reaction force acting the other way. So it's going to be in the positive direction. So out of all this, once you write all this out, you'll have this big formula uh, with all these variables, or with all these uh, um, dimensions in them, but the last one is the only one that has an unknown in it. So if we basically just do the math here, plug and chug away to get that unknown on the right side of the equal sign, you'll come up with the answer. And basically our assumption at the end is that these forces are making this thing turn in a negative direction or a clockwise direction. So therefore, our RB is a positive number. Therefore, it's a po going in the positive Y direction, which is obvious here. Now you do the same exact use the same exact um, method to do RB. Uh, so basically there's a support here that has, we're going to set that to zero and say there's no movement here, so therefore these fo forces have to be equal. And so you do the math and there's your answer at the end. So at the very end of the problem, what we do is we always do a summation of forces at the Y in the Y direction to make sure that it comes out to zero if it does not come out to zero, you've made a mistake or a bad assumption somewhere and need to go back and uh, look at your problem setup. So that is how you come up with the answer to 
the support forces using a, a force diagram, using the, um, the summation forces uh, and moments technique to find the resultant forces on a beam.